प्रणाम आचार्य जी माई क्वेश्चन टू यू इज अबाउट मिसकनसेप्शन सो वी सी अ लॉट ऑफ मिसकनसेप्शन इन सोसाइटी ऑन रिलीजन एंड देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ स्टूपिडिटी दैट गोज ऑन वी आर टॉट सो मेनी थिंग्स इन द नेम ऑफ फियर एंड वी जस्ट एक्सेप्टेड लाइक राइट नाउ आई एल गिव एन एग्जाम्पल ऑन फेस्टिवल्स वी डोंट केयर अबाउट वॉट द एक्चुअल मीनिंग ऑफ द फेस्टिवल ऑल इट इज़ टू यंगस्टर्स इज अबाउट प्लानिंग दिस कि होली पे बाहर जाएंगे एंड इवन वेन यू टॉक्ट अबाउट वाइब्रेशन सो आई वॉज हैविंग अ कॉन्वर्जेशन इन विच आई हर्ट कि इफ यू गो आउट ड्यूरिंग द सोलार एक्लिप्स देर आर नेगेटिव एनर्जीज नेगेटिव वाइब्रेशंस एंड आई वॉज लाइक कि वॉट नेगेटिव वाइब्रेशंस ट्रांसवर्स वाइब्रेशंस वॉट वॉट इज दैट साइंटिफिक टर्म आर यू टॉकिंग अबाउट सो देर आर सो मेनी मिसकनसेप्शंस देर इज सो मेनी स्टूबिटिटी इन इन द सोसाइटी दैट गोज ऑन एंड समटाइम्स आई हियर अबाउट स्टोरीज वेर इट रिजल्ट इन वायलेंस एंड आई एम डिस्टर्ब बाय दैट सो आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क कि हाउ डू वी अवॉइड ऑल दैट I think the first step has to be to make science compulsory till class twelfth. I really cringe when I hear somebody talking of positive, negative vibrations and positive, negative energies and such things. The thing is that this fellow didn't take physics seriously even till class tenth. Otherwise, how can you talk of negative vibrations? What exactly does that mean? and from that comes the word vibes everybody is talking of vibrations continuously this fellow came in and the moment he entered the room i experienced negative vibrations what kind what, what do you mean by that negative vibrations if there are vibrations let there be an instrument to capture them record them and tell me the intensity there has to be a wave form i want to see that wave form on paper and then i want to accord an equation to it what vibrations but there is an entire cult huge cult of vibrations what what's going on what's going on the problem is illiteracy at both levels scientific and spiritual we do not know science and we do not know spirituality so anything goes but we have heard of these terms because they have become common place the blessing of science is that it has given even the scientifically illiterate people the fruits of technology you might not know science at all yet the fruits of technology like the mobile phone are easily accessible to you in fact you might be someone who is contemptuous towards science so many people are aren't they for example somebody would say oh covid is just a hoax the virus does not exist at all even if you display to him the entire structure of the virus this is the virus he'll say no it does not exist even this kind of a person will be happily roaming about with a mobile phone if you have so much contempt towards science why are you using the products of technology why are you using the products of technology so Because that's the thing you see. I keep emphasizing wherever I go, including in campuses. When I came here, I just said, "Please keep inner education compulsory. Have one course per semester, or at least every odd semester. Otherwise, in spite of being scientifically literate, the fellow might still turn up superstitious, and that's possible. I have seen eminent scientists." deeply superstitious not just in isro but even in other agencies nasa very eminent scientist often of the status of a director and the fellow is still superstitious why because he did not have inner education you require both in tandem you require science and you require spirituality you require the outer education that vedant calls as avidya and you require the inner education that vedant calls as vidya if you lack in either of them then you will be just roaming around in ignorance of all kinds of these two obviously the inner ignorance is uh, more fatal 
sir uh, even not only misconceptions about science but also misconceptions about uh, religious concepts and spirit that's true that's very true see we just believe the fundamental attitude is of belief not inquiry we don't want to know we just want to take in anything that's inner laziness no spirituality you call that as a tamsa you just want to take in anything and you don't want to go into it the spirit of exploration inquiry investigation is not there it's not a part of our culture as such it's not a part of most of the cultures even in the west it is not really very prominent so when it comes to science we believe in anything and when it comes to spirituality there also we believe in anything we do not know a thing about the objective world we also do not know a thing about our religions so we do not know why festivals exist there might be a very important reason why the institution of a festival has been wisely constructed but that reason is lost on us we have no idea at all we just celebrate so diwali is just about crackers and lights and sweets and gifts and and such things what actually does diwali stand for very few people know when you do not know how can you celebrate diwali in its true spirit the spirit is also gone any festival hmm? you you just had bakreed and it has become to the vast majority of muslims a day of slaughter what is this are festivals about such things hmm? what is holi the day when you throw balloons at all kinds of people especially girls that's holy what are we doing christmas is all about consumerism shopping you go shop that's christmas you shop right till the new year eve these two are one just as we do not know what's going on in the universe we also do not know what is going on within us so somebody comes up and says oh you see this particular pic has been taken by nasa on the diwali night hmm it's a pic showing the map of india on diwali night and it goes viral on whatsapp everybody is sharing it and india is resplendent in that pic lightened up and those lights are visible 6000 kilometers up in the space and we are so proud we are so proud see nasa has sent us this pic the entire india is illuminated and you have pics of ram setu see nasa has again sent this pic and ram setu is visible between india and lanka the level of scientific literacy is so low we tend to believe in just about anything we believe in anything in the world and we believe in anything in the inner world so somebody tells you inside there are waves why that positive vibrations you will believe it somebody tells you inside there is some kind of uh, uh, ruh or soul and if you sleep with your mouth open it's likely to escape <laughs> so you better keep things locked and tight over here and you will believe it take it from me there are 40 times more ridiculous kinds of beliefs circulating and people are damn serious about them and i won't be amazed unfortunately if even a few in the audience here subscribe to those beliefs sir uh, i think a major reason for all of this is our media and what we are shown so i was uh, talk, i was no, hearing about there was no media a thousand years back but you still thought that eclipses can mean evil to you was it the media's doing no who did it then you go to tribal societies and they are mired in superstition are they victims of media work they don't have any access to media why are they still so terribly superstitious please tell me then where does it come from
Where does it come from? Where does it come from? The real culprit is so close to you, you can't put your finger on it. Where does it come from? Huh? <laughs> superstition existed then, superstition exists now. Superstition exists in illiterate people, superstition exists in, in PhDs and scientists. Where does then superstition really come from? Superstition exists in the field of religion. Superstition exists even in science. Superstition percolates every dimension of our being, our thought. Where does it come from? It comes from us. What do you mean by us? Our mind. Because we are afraid deeper, 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 deeper. Yeah, you are close, deeper. No, no. Where does it come from? What do you mean by the mind? It comes from this, the body. That's the way our bodies are. It comes from our tissues, our cells, our DNA. That's the way human beings genetically are. That's where superstition comes from. Biologically, we are not created to really know. We are created to believe. Knowing is dangerous for the biological self. Tell me why. Because a lot of things that please the biological self show up their real and ugly face when you know. So your prakritic nature, your biological nature is to not to know and just to believe. Knowing is dangerous. Knowing is dangerous. Have you experienced that? How dangerous knowledge can be? It can shatter your entire identity. Therefore, people prefer to live in ignorance. Even if the option to really know and understand and realize is available, they would rather not exercise that option. Once you know of your inner darkness, it is terrible and humiliating and also then it puts a responsibility on you. If you know there is a lot of dirt inside, then you have to become responsible to clean it up. Who wants to own that responsibility? Who wants to put in that effort? It is far more easier, comfortable to just let the dirt and the darkness remain and you can comfortably sleep. Are you getting it? So we are not designed to know. We are designed to remain ignorant and belief assists ignorance just believe somebody has told you something trust believe do not know now you know why knowing requires so much effort whereas believing comes so easy would you voluntarily want to do something that requires effort difficult right what would happen? There, there's an option to go for something that's so easy. You can sleep and it still gets done. And then there is something that requires continuous work, diligence. How many people choose the latter option? That's the reason why knowledge is precious but difficult and wisdom is even rarer. Knowledge is about knowing this. Wisdom is about knowing this plus this. Hmm? So we have to be very cautious of ourselves. Our real enemy sits within here in the body itself, in the DNA itself. We don't need external enemies. We already have an in-house one. And you can't really get rid of it. It will continue to sit next to you as long as you are embodied. Do 
you see we are in a difficult position to be born is to be born in a difficult state to be born is to born along with an enemy the two of you are born together you and your enemy you are consciousness and the very old primitive tendencies are your enemy the body but these two have to coexist so they are tied together they are wedded together it's a difficult marriage that has to last the entire life a difficult marriage where the two are antagonists hmm spirituality you call consciousness as purush the body as prakriti the task of the purush is to be with prakriti and yet not get allured be with her and yet not allow her to dominate you so uh, following up a question to what you just answered let's get an example let's say i'm a 7 year old kid who goes to school and learns something that is non superstitious let's say my parents are superstitious and when i come back home they say what you learned at school was wrong and you have to learn this superstitious thing now according to me my parents are more important to me because they have given me birth and all those things so uh, while getting these two conflict ideas i may go to the wrong uh, idea because th- that person was important to me so how do you remove this factor of you know importance of people and just imp- getting into the importance of idea no you should utter the word i or me with great care because it's quite possible that something alien that you have absorbed within is speaking as i it is not really i it is not internal it is actually external alien but in your subconscious state in your sleep you just happened to take it in and now it has come in and is masquerading as hmm, pretending to be the i so when you say i believe that my parents are more what my parents say is more education is more important than what my teachers say that's not what you believe in that's what you have been taught to believe in so don't say it is my belief that parents word is more important even even this belief that parents are more important than let's say books is coming from the parents what else would they tell you <laughs> what else would they tell you so it's not your belief even the belief that parents are sacrosanct is a belief given to you by parents what else do you expect them to do so be very careful what is really your own that's not your own that's a cultural belief that's a familial thing and those cultural beliefs vary from land to land and time to time don't they the kind of importance you give to parents in india is very different from what you give to them in the us let's say hmm? the kind of importance you give to give to marriage is very difficult is very different from country to country even community to community hmm age to age then how can it be something internal to you it's a function of time culture society norms it's not yours and that's the freedom a young man should seek to not to be a victim of cultural norms of what goes around hmm? and that is true religiosity that is true spirituality true spirituality is not about beliefs beliefs are bondages true spirituality is about freedom freedom from all beliefs your commitment your allegiance has to be solely to the truth nothing else i am not obliged to honor anything except the truth you get this you are not obliged rid yourself of all other obligations and promises no you are not obliged your only responsibility your only commitment is towards the truth all else is dispensable all else can be given up if it's proven to be untrue including the things that you are taught to hold as sacred sacredness is not higher than truthfulness 
because only the truth is sacred if something that you hold as sacred is not the truth or truthful how exactly is it sacred in the first place only am i making sense convince me you are with me am i making sense all right only the truth is sacred what is sacred something that you unconditionally honor something that you never want to breach or violate or disrespect right that sacredness something that you take as beyond yourself something that you take as transcending yourself so you always bow down to it that sacredness only the truth is sacred no belief no relationship no experience nothing in life is sacred except the one and if you can see that and if you can practice that then you will experience a great freedom in life which actually is your birthright a birthright that is denied to most of us unfortunately I'm getting it hmm? so so like when we say that we are free to uh, believe what we want to believe no like from our side if we have to believe the truth and we can we have to we are not obliged to anything no 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 wait wait, wait. there is a problem here okay. when you say you are free to want anything or believe in anything that's not freedom at all freedom does not rush after wants or desires or beliefs they are all one they come from your darkness freedom questions everything because freedom wants to accept only the real freedom has a great distaste for fakeness do you want or like fake stuff how many of you huh? to not to like fakeness is freedom what if your desires themselves are fake what is fake that which is second handed somebody installs a desire inside you why do you want to call it your desire please tell me please tell me a clever marketer comes here for example and in some cunning way starts advertising let's say a new mobile phone to you without even explicitly saying that he is here to advertise and because he is advertising his stuff you develop a desire for it that's what advertising does does it not what happens when you watch an ad you become desirous and then you call that desire as your desire how is it your desire please tell me so how is it freedom then to rush after an imported desire somebody has installed a desire in you and now you are investing your time and energy and life in fulfilling that desire is that a wise thing to do so that's not freedom that's bondage freedom is not about doing what you want to do as young people please get that right out of your mind because that's the popular notion of freedom young people love to have i'm free to do whatever i want to do if you are free to do whatever you want to do then you are a terrible slave not a free man because all desires all desires remember this are external impositions that you take in in your ignorance you do not realize they are external things desires come either from your body or from your sensual experience or a combination of the two are you getting it food for example the fundamental urge arises from the body but you might not be according it much weightage and then somebody brings a platter of something delicious in front of you and there is the tempting aroma and what do you find you find desire arising with all its force the two have combined the basic urge was bodily the body was saying i am hungry and then there was an external stimulus the sight and the smell 
and the result was deep desire that's the anatomy of desire that's how it arises now do you want to really call it your own and food is a fundamental bodily thing so it's all right if you have that desire think of the several other things hmm i said desire makes you a terrible slave why because everybody knows how to excite you if uh, if you have some money in your pocket and if i come and snatch it i would be called a thief and a robber you would launch an fire right what if i just tempt you and you give that money to me now the transaction is legal and acceptable but the same thing has happened the robber has just grown clever no instead of snatching it from you he advertised something useless to you and you you bought it and you gave the money it's just robbery and you are very happy that you have fulfilled your desire no it's not your desire you have fulfilled if anything it was probably the robber's desire you have fulfilled have you not it's not your desire whenever desire arises ask yourself how is it mine how really is it mine it is either the body's thing or the senses thing when you are in a state to discount these two kinds of desires the bodily one and the external social one then you will be faced with something very very important once these two desires are discounted then you are left with your deepest pure original desire and the wise ones have told us that the purpose of life is to fulfill that one deepest desire not the thousand shallow miscellaneous ones if you spend your life fulfilling the various miscellaneous desires that's just wastage of life but beneath the thousand shallow desires the real one deep desire remains hidden you never come to know of it when you don't come to know of it there is no possibility of fulfilling it first of all keep the keep the false desires aside so that you can see the real desire and once you see the real desire it's so fascinating to try to fulfill it hmm that real desire is denoted by a better word it's called love it's no more a desire than it's love and then what you get is a life spent in love not love of the kind you watch on the screens real love not love of the kind that necessarily includes a person mostly of the other gender no love of the real kind love that brings brings life to life hmm? that's the kind of life you all deserve to live but you'll you'll squander the opportunity if you think that uh, you want to buy a t-shirt and that's what you want or you want to attend a rock concert and that's what you want and all these are little things petty desires you can't you can't invest too much in them hmm sir i want to know that how do we uh, explore what's inside of us like in the starting of the session you said that what sees through our eyes or what listens through these ears so how do we explore what that is or if we google this out so there's so many religions they all have different methods of doing that so how do i know what's right for me start by discounting that's the way you will probably never come to know the perfect answer but i said that you should be grateful if you can discount the gross imperfections that's the way if you keep waiting for the perfect one or perfect thing or perfect answer you will keep waiting don't wait start by rejecting negating discounting have the heart to disown and be detached keep things aside the moment you honestly know that they are not what 
what you must value. Keep them aside. Is all this sounding very dry? No, it is not. It is not. It's just that we have been trained in the wrong kind of juices. What I'm talking of is actually something very lively, very exciting. It's just that uh, you need to experiment a bit, you need to try it out. Huh? And you need to hold on for a while. There would be the initial resistance, don't bow down to it. Stand firm for a while and then you will start seeing that, that this way of living in true freedom is actually very enticing. And once you get the taste of it, the hang of it, you will forget all about the usual juvenile stuff. You will laugh at it, you will not look at it, you will discard it. This is so enticing. Hmm? You will need to begin, you will need to try things out. He said two things, one is body and other is consciousness. Body has a shape and we can feel it. But what about consciousness? How do you... Pure consciousness is formless, attributeless, nameless. The senses cannot perceive it, the mind cannot think of it. But our consciousness definitely has a shape. For example, if you are body identified, then your consciousness has the shape of the body. If I am greatly enamored by this mug, then my consciousness takes almost the shape of this mug. I become this. No. Have you seen? When you are very fascinated by something, you lose sense of everything else and your entire mind is focused on that one thing itself. So consciousness as we have it is an adulterated thing and is uh, intertwined with one object or the other. But pure consciousness, no shape, nothing. And that's what its purity is all about. To be free of everything that has shape and form and name. That's why it is called pure. Pure of, pure of shapes, norms, 